please be seated. This is the time in our service that we want to again remember the saving work of our Savior Jesus Christ, who obediently suffered and died on our behalf as a sacrifice for our sin. We must also recall that he rose from the dead, overcoming sin and death. Believing that Jesus rose from the dead is fundamental to our salvation. Today, our communion passage is Galatians 2.20. If you are here and you do not have a Bible, there are men who will be bringing them down the aisle. Please raise your hand if you need one. And if you don't have a Bible, please feel free to take the this one home with you. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper, please consider, as Smed talked about a couple of weeks ago, that the Lord's table is a place of safety and peace. For those of us who are saved, we are called to and blessed to participate in the celebrating of the Lord's table. In celebrating the Lord's table, we know that we are safe from God's wrath. We are safe from the power of sin and death. We are safe from Satan's grasp. We are at peace with our God. We have a personal relationship with him, and we are a part of his kingdom forever and ever. Please pray with me. Father, we know that we are here because of you. We love because you loved us first. We are blessed to know you and to be known by you. We are privileged to be at your table. May we, may we remember well the perfect sacrifice of your son as payment for our sins. In Jesus' name. Let's read together Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live but Christ lives in me. The life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. This is Paul speaking. I want to draw our attention to four phrases in this passage. Those phrases are crucified with Christ, Christ lives within me, I live by faith, he gave himself up for me. Galatians 2.20 is stating what happens and what is believed when a person is saved or born again. Before we look at it in more detail, let's consider the context of Paul's statement. Paul is speaking to believers, assuring them of the truth that is in Galatians 2.20. False teachers were advocating that to be saved, believers needed to be circumcised to take on the extra burden of being justified by works of the law. False teachers were teaching that in order for a Gentile to be right with God, they first had to be circumcised and then they could come to Christ. This was a doctrine of both grace and works. This is a different gospel than Paul was teaching, which was justification by faith alone in Christ alone. Justification comes by faith in Christ based on his work on our behalf, not on ours. Why is justification by faith such an important doctrine? Justification by faith is what separates biblical salvation from every other belief system. In all other re religions, man is trying to work his way to God. Paul is, in this passage, is trying to assure the Galatian believers that their conversion was complete without adding ritual or works 
Paul so also wanted to make sure that the church was united under the doctrine of justification by faith. Galatians 2.20 is the culmination of Paul's teaching in the first two chapters of Galatians. Paul states that I have been crucified with Christ. Paul was not literally crucified with Christ, but what Paul is saying is that because of Christ's death and resurrection, he was no longer subject to the penalty of, of the law. The penalty of our sin was paid for by Christ through his death on the cross. Romans 6, 6 and 7 says, Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. Paul goes on to say, Christ lives in me. When Christ rose from the dead, we as believers rose also. The risen Christ now abides in us through his Holy Spirit. As believers filled with the Holy Spirit, we can now live in a way that pleases God. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Paul makes the statement that he now lives by faith. Faith for Paul is believing that Christ's death and resurrection was for the purpose to save sinners. Faith in Jesus is simply trust in his work on the cross and to believe all that is re revealed in Scripture concerning the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Paul trusted, and he knew it was only by God's grace through believing faith that God credited him, credited him with the righteousness of his Son. Paul says in the last part of Galatians 2.20 that Jesus gave himself up for me. Paul is acknowledging that Jesus took on the likeness of man so that through his death on the cross, it would be a sacrifice sufficient to appease the wrath of God for all who would believe. Philippians 2.8, being found in the appearance of man, he humbled himself by being obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. In this passage, Paul is assuring believing Gentiles that through Christ's death, the penalty for a believer's sin is fully paid. When Christ rose from the dead, he also empowered us to be able to live for his righteousness. Prior to our believing in Christ, I'm sure most of us thought we were good enough and could work our way into God's grace. But as a believer, like Paul, we live by faith in the Son of God. Paul, after his summary statement in verse 2, states in verse 21 that if salvation comes through our works, then Christ died needlessly. If you are here today and uh, are still thinking that your works will be sufficient to appease God's wrath and to allow you entrance into heaven, please consider Paul's testimony in Galatians 2.20. Paul's former life was crucified with Christ and now he lives by faith alone in Christ. All of Paul's sins, past, present, and future, were paid in full by Christ's death. Your sin can also be forgiven through Christ's death. Ask God to give you the faith to believe in his son and his work on the cross. Please note that communion is a time for believers only. It is a time to remember Christ and how he rescued us from the power of sin and death. If you don't have a relationship with Christ, in that you don't believe in his death and resurrection, and you don't trust in him as your Lord and Savior, 
please consider being reconciled to him today, now, and then join us in celebrating a new life in Christ. If you choose not to repent and believe, please allow the elements to pass you by. As a believer, please use this time to remember our Savior, to confess your sins, and worship the only true God who saved you from your sin through the death and resurrection of his Son. Men, come in service. You may take communion on your own when you're ready. I'll be back in a few minutes to close this time in prayer. <clears throat>